right, here we are, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor with Sutton Group Ottawa. And we are joined today with Carrie Irvin, Carrie Irvin Communication. We're going to be telling a lot of stories about how Carrie had started. So I want to go back again from an entrepreneur side of things. For you, who would be the ideal client? For you guys to work with? That's a great question. Someone asked me that at a, an event yesterday, actually. I haven't really given a lot of thought to who my ideal client is um, so far. I've been very fortunate to have some amazing clients. I think an ideal client for me is a medium-sized business that has, you know, a fair budget. Um, because one of the things that's difficult is if people don't believe in marketing or don't haven't set aside a budget for it. Sometimes people don't, you know, understand the value. But a company that is willing to invest in marketing understands the importance of it. And then I really want to work with people who are like partners and collaborators. So if I take on a client, I'm there for them like 24-7. I don't want to be counting the minutes that I'm working for them. If they need something, they're going to get yeah. that right away. So that kind of collaboration and partnership is really important to me. I love doing the nonprofit work that I'm doing right now. I'm working for Body Peace Canada, which is an eating disorder organization nationally, I'm working for Shepherds of Good Hope and and others. But I also love the private sector. Like I would I would love to bring on some private sector clients. Mm -hmm. I love design. I love fashion. I I love arts and culture and, and all of those uh, things. And then destination marketing. So, you know, I love the fact that we have like the new cause the Hard Rock Casino opening, the the hotel, the destination. Those those types of projects are certainly very interesting. And for any sort of business, what makes it interesting I find is like finding that niche, right? Like yep. where you actually excel uh, is when you're at your best. Yes. You know what I mean? Like for example, for me, I know that my best customers that I can give it my all is immigrants. You know what I mean? And I, I, f I found that over the years that like no matter how I slice it or dice it, yeah. I work really well with an immigrant family that's coming in or a, an immigrant business owner that's trying to start something. Right. Uh, and it's really because I, I guess in my opinion, it's just like because I've under I understand the struggle somehow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I have the passion to make sure that I want to help them and get them where they need to be. And the beauty of it is because I love doing it so yes. much with like, even if I don't get paid, I'm still going to do it. Right, right, right. You, you'd be surprised how many people that I take on, for example, rentals. And people are like, well, what are you doing rentals for? Like, they, they don't pay me. Right. Anything. But it's that passion Definitely. that you bring in that makes it easier to deliver. Yeah. I think that goes back to your question about the power of why. Exactly. The Simon Sinek thing. I think we all have things that we are just like, you know, you connect to and you really want to be involved in. For me, it's Big Brothers, Big Sisters. So because I did that campaign that I mentioned before, the BU campaign, I've always had a soft spot in my heart. Then they had a position on the board, and I'm now on the board of directors. And I just get so, I, I don't get paid to be on the board, but I feel so much connection to the work they're doing because I saw the power of mentorship and how it helped kids. So when you see kids who have had mentors over the years, it's yeah. incredible how they improved in school and their relationships improved. And and it really helps, like, the positive outcomes in their life. And that makes me want to work harder for them. So when I do fundraisers for Big Brothers, Big Sisters, it really is coming from a place of, of personal passion. And, you know, the other thing I'm thinking about is music. So I recently just got on stage after 15 years mm -hmm. of not having sung publicly. I, I used to sing all the time. It was something I was always, you know, really excited. I loved singing uh, growing up. And back in the day, you know, when I was younger, I was in bands and I would sing in bars and that kind of thing. And I hadn't done it for like 20 years, just, you know, becoming like a mother and whatever. I know life. And then I met Ted Cardi. I'm sure you know Yes, Ted. I know Ted really well. Yes. So Ted runs uh, an event called Capo, which yep. is all about business people who also have a passion for music. And I, I he'll kill me for this, but, you know, he convinced me <laughs> that I should. I convinced him that he should do his event for Big Brothers Big Sisters, and he agreed right away, which was lovely of him. But then he convinced me that I should get up and sing at this event with him. And so we, I, I agreed, and we started practicing, and we'd go to open mics, and it just brought music back into my life in a way that I didn't realize the joy it yeah. brought me. Like, I really realized how much I had missed it. 
And we just had so much fun doing that. So we were, you know, we had two songs. And so I, because I'm on the board, I thought it would be a great surprise for the other people. So I didn't tell anyone that I was performing. Amazing. They thought I was just getting up to say a thank you to the board of directors, to the people coming. It was a super successful night. We had a sold out crowd at, at the Rainbow. Yep. We were able to raise $12,000 for Big Brothers Big Sisters. I was so nervous to get up there. And I felt like I remember that afternoon thinking, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Why are you putting yourself out there? People are going to think, you know. Uh, anyway, I did it. As soon as I walked on that stage, Tara Shannon introduced me, which was, she gave me this lovely introduction. And then all of that fear just dropped away. And I thought, I'm just going to have fun. I'm up here. I said I was going to do it. And I'm going to go for it. I'm going to channel a little Stevie Nicks. I'm going to have some fun. That's it. It's all <laughs> about having fun. And, and this is one of the reasons why some people really succeed in doing business and some people don't. It's, a, right. it's that sense of like, no matter what, I'm still going to do it. Yep. And whether yes. I get paid or not, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. And it's, that's all that matters. And sometimes it's to push past that fear. Yeah. Like someone might be fearful of coming on a podcast or, you know, you have to push past those things and do them anyway. And I really feel like the magic happens. When you're uncomfortable. When you're uncomfortable, when you go outside of your yeah. comfort zone. Like that night, it was pure magic. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, it, everybody. It, it's funny every time I hear that and I, I just laugh. Like, when people, well, how do you do this? I'm like, I love being uncomfortable. I just yeah. genuinely <laughs> love being uncomfortable. I don't know that I love it. <laughs> I, I do. It's just it, to me, it's like, so before in the past, it used to be like getting pushed to do stuff. My dad used to do this yeah. to, to us all the time. Like, I, for example, I've learned how to swim at 14. Oh, good for you. Right? Yeah. And it was, if I tell you the story, you're going to probably be like, oh, this is a little abuse. <laughs> we literally got, you know, my dad sent us both to, my brother and I, to um, camp and, you know, they took us to the pier and they're like, all right, jump. Oh, my God. But it was run by the Marines. Okay. Back home. Jump. Ah, don't feel like it. Jump. We don't feel like it. Next thing you know, they're literally like loading the gun. Oh my. Pop up a couple of shots. Jump. <laughs> so we jump naturally because you're. That sounds fearful. traumatic. Very traumatic. But I've learned how to, like, within about an hour, we were swimming. Yeah. Wow. The And then after that, it just became like a thing, right? Like whenever you're uncomfortable, you just go, I'm going to push past it no matter what. I'm just going to enjoy it. I'm yes. going to enjoy the suck. Yeah. And then see what happens. Yeah. And every time you enjoy it, you're like, oh, something something magical happens, comes out of it. It's so true. So for me, that experience was magic on that night. Mm -hmm. And then Ted and I are now co-producing the next Capo 4. So I'm, I'm here to tell you about it first. Amazing. <laughs> we just, so we're doing it on November 1st at the Rainbow. And for me, to tie in things that mean a lot to me, going back to the why, we are raising funds for the Cancer Foundation, which is why I wanted to be at the breakfast yesterday morning. Um, my sister is actually battling cancer right now. And Sorry. yeah, it, it's, it's an awful thing. And she's amazing and so resilient and positive. Her attitude is incredible. I don't think I could be the same in her position. But I think for me, it's a way of coping with it to be able to like, just to try, there's nothing I can do to help her really, you know, I mean, she's got doctors to, to do that. But this way, if I can raise money for cancer, then I feel like I'm doing something, yeah. you know, and it just breaks my heart to see her go through this. Um, it's been a very difficult journey. It's been like over two years now and she's, she's still battling. But to do this makes me feel really good. So going back to the why, it's like, you know, one, it's combining my joy of, of music and singing and bringing that back into my life. And then I'm able to do it for a cause that, that means something to myself and my whole family. Yeah. And then that's, that's the biggest thing is like just the why is really the strongest thing that can get you either on track or off track. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And people do get off track, right? Yeah. yeah. Start off easily. with the intention easily, easily because all of a sudden this is coming your way or yeah. that's coming your way. Or something. Especially as a small business too. Like there's so many things that are pulling on you. You know, you got to you yep. make rent. You got to make, you know, a payroll at the end of the day. You, you have so many different things coming at you yeah. that you start forgetting and you start cutting corners and yep. things like that that could, you know, again, easily get you off track yep. of the why. Exactly. And going back to what we said before it's you asked me about what type of client you know what's my ideal client and I would say to put it in a nutshell is a client that is aligned like mm -hmm. aligned uh, in some way 
uh, in terms of like, you know, understanding the quality of marketing that you want to have out there, not willing to, you know, do it on the cheap or, or do something. Yeah. I'd rather not do something <laughs> than do it and have it be out there and, and not be, um, not be good work. Sure, for sure. I just want to ask, actually, how hard do you think it is for you to work with a client or a business that has absolutely no definition of their why? And have you had any of those experiences before? Well, I will say that I've had some indecisive clients, and I find that the hardest to work with. Mm -hmm. So I much prefer, let's say, a challenging or a client with high expectations, but who knows exactly who they are and, and what they want to do. I have had some wonderful clients who are wonderful people, but they're just very indecisive about where they're going. But I do feel that that I'm good at that, and that's part of my role is when I come in to, to help, you know, keep them on track and find the direction. And sometimes it can be frustrating when you're working with someone like that, but sometimes it's it's rewarding when you know, when you figure out what their why is and their purpose and help them get there. And I feel like marketing is, is all part of that as well, right? It's, it's looking at who they are, who, who the audience is. I'm fascinated by people's motivations and the motivations of like, like why does someone shop at one place and yeah. another? Why does someone shop on Amazon instead of, uh, you know, another platform? Like there are those motivations also come back to your clients. So you're looking for their motivations, what's mm -hmm. in it for them, what's their why. And once you discover that, usually you can get on track with them and then start doing the work. It's funny because like I, I do this quite often at networking events, right? Like when I'm dealing with, starting with a business or talking to somebody and then like the first question that I ask is, hey, who are you? And start talking and go, why do you do this? Yeah. And it's very rewarding to see like them light up and start talking about it and like yeah. they're just so passionate about it and then there's some that are just completely dull and you're like you're obviously in it for the money it doesn't yeah. make sense maybe you should pick something else and yeah. but that's an internal dialogue that I'm having yes. with myself right and then that's the thing like to me it's like once you figured out what's your purpose mm -hmm. everything else becomes a little bit easier to fill in the blank yeah I, I totally agree with that. And, I, and then what I think happens is once you know your purpose and you have that clarity, guess what? It starts coming to you, yeah. right? It you start attracting it. You're attracting it. And I think the key is is not necessarily going after it. It's about figuring that out mm -hmm. yourself so that you're attracting that, that kind of work or, or that, you know, whatever it is in life. Yeah. And I think that's really, really important uh, for marketing, for sure. I mean, that's, that's what I love. I, and I find that the more clear I am, the easier it is, like clients are coming to me, and and all part of like doing these types of things is you know talking about it and with people like, uh, you know talking reminiscing about some of the things you've done when you when you look back over your career and all of the things you've done you'll see patterns and you'll see where you aligned with mm -hmm. something and why that's really special to you. For instance, like I've always promoted like women and children, so that's why the BU campaign, which was all about girl self esteem between nine and sixteen, like. That, that that was me. I mean, I was so aligned with that program, which is why I think it became my best work. So, yeah. and then attracting ended up being years later on the board of Big Brothers, Big Sisters. I mean, those, you know, those things I don't think happened by accident. So let's talk a little bit more about the event that's happening on November 1st. I do want to bring or shed some light on it, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, and then talk a little bit more about the organization that you're supporting with that event, if that's okay with you. Yes, for sure. Uh, so Capo 4 is, uh, is the event on November 1st at the Rainbow. The whole idea, which I think is really fun. So, you know, you and I, we know we, we go to a lot of networking things. Mm -hmm. This is like totally different. In the sense that it's business people that you may not even know that they are a musician yeah. or that they, you know, on the side, they're playing guitar every night or these people that want to get up and perform. It gives them an opportunity to do that. So we have some incredible musicians in, in Ottawa, by the way, which I've now discovered. Mm -hmm. Like we have John Sicard from Canaxes. He's like a real music yep. buff and a CEO. I had Ted of... telling me all about it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Ted probably explains it better than I do. Mm -hmm. So I'll do my best. So people like that who like, you know, last time we had Kevin Ford from Callian closed out the show. People, we were dancing the whole night. They did an incredible set. 
But it's also an opportunity for singer-songwriters or people like me who sing but don't play guitar. So, you know, we provide the opera like a band or a backing guitarist yeah. and uh, allow those people to get up and, and do what they love to do. We we get them to, you know, we practice. We, we're going to actually have events leading up to Capo 4 where they are able to go out to open mics and different venues and, and practice. And then we put on a show and it's for business people as well to come to. And so it's a networking event, if you will, but everybody is like just, it doesn't feel like one. It's it's really about the talent that's on stage. Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was so much fun. And when I went to the first one, I had such a great time and he was doing it for Shepherds of Good Hope. Yeah. And that's when I said to him, would you do it for Big Brothers, Big Sisters? So now doing it for the Cancer Foundation, I think is, you know, wonderful and, and our plan. So he and I are now co- co-producing it and we are going to take this to the next level. <laughs> I, I said to him, we got to blow this out the door. We did it quickly last yeah. time. We didn't even have a lot of sponsors, but believe me, I will be knocking on people's doors. And just to give you a little bit of a background, Ted and I used to be sort of rival. Like he worked for uh, he worked for Gridway. I don't know, sorry, okay. I don't remember what the company name, but was he grade A? Grade A, yes. and then I was working for fully managed, so we were just stealing accounts from one another quite often. Oh well, okay. Gridway was another one that was off also. Another rival for us for the, the whole Canada sort of, high, yeah. you know, um, providing professional services and what have you for a lot of the small businesses. Yeah. So when I had him on the show and I was just talking about it, then he started bringing, he's like, it was you. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, really? I'd love to come to that event. I think it would be a great opportunity to, uh, you know, I, again, for someone that's like myself also just been experienced cancer as well too and the support. To yes. you know, bring out, shed some light on on this organization, and really, at the end of the day, is like well, the whole target is to try to eradicate cancer one way or another. And if we can do it in in such a way that it's fun and yeah, exactly you know, and bring people out and dancing, network, bring out your friends, and just have a really good time. Yeah. And yeah, and the rainbow is always a fantastic venue as well, too. It's exactly you can't go wrong. No, and it's different and it's unique. And people, you know, I don't know about you, but I hadn't been to the rainbow in many years. I yeah. used to back in the day. Um, but hadn't been, so it just it was fun to to relive that. That's and Ted is amazing, an amazing musician. And you know, it's funny we've known each other for a few years, but it's really this this event that brought us together. And once you start singing and playing, and and we had like musical interests uh, that really uh, sort of bonded our our relationship to the point. Yeah, where... yeah. No, this has been a lot of fun. Really appreciate it, Carrie. But uh, I feel like we could probably talk about marketing, cancer, this, <laughs> and entrepreneurship for yes, hours. And every time we we're at our networking event, Carrie and I just can't stop talking. It just it happens. The other time, she thought I didn't recognize her, which was a little upsetting. But I knew who you are the second I saw you when really? I said hi. Who was that? Um, at Hari's thing. You're like, oh, you don't remember? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you forgot. Yeah, no, no. You forgot about you, the event. No, it was the other guy. He was, who, who was the guy you were standing with? When you, when you came in, you were with a tall... Oh, yes. It was him. Yes. He always forgets me. He always forgets I shouldn't you. say this live on a podcast, yeah, but yeah. now that you know... No, it wasn't you. No, no, it was it was him. I was, no, he I, and I sat beside each other. I have a thing for see. faces and names. Yeah. No, no. I remember you from the day I met you at, uh, at the... At Rogers. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. And I've seen you at many events with the Star Wars, Beyond Networking, and, you know, we... We're you should come to the next one. We have one on the 3rd. It's supposed to be like a family picnic out in Manatee. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Uh, it'll be actually at, uh, like, we'll, we'll probably have food trucks and all of that cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, I love your events, and you guys do a great job, and I love the fact that you give back to, to one and I was at with Chio, I think, mm-hmm. and I really, really respect uh, what you guys are doing, so... I'm always That's the thing. It's work. always about giving back to a, a purpose or some sort of uh, charity within the community that we're, at the end of the day, like, it's all fun and games. We're out there networking and trying to build business. But if you can do it in such a way that you're leaving very little footprint and you're actually making big impacts, yes. that's what it's all about. Yeah. I always feel like if we can align our work with our passions, then we are the luckiest people in the yeah. world. And it's funny because I, I literally just fell into it, right? I wasn't, like, I wasn't going to, I I love networking events, don't get me wrong, right. but I wasn't supposed to be part of any of them. You didn't plan to do your own. No. What had happened, to be honest, and I'll probably say this on the podcast for the first time, 
a lot of people heard the story. I went to one of the Star Wars events at uh, Beyond. That was like maybe the first couple of events that I went to. Okay. And I'm, you see me at events. I'm, I just don't stop, right? Like I'm yep. moving from table <laughs> yep. to table, talking to everybody. You work in the room. Work in the room, I guess, if you want to call it. But it's really genuinely just what right. like, you know, I just want to say hi to everybody. Okay. That's just the way I've always been. And Star Wars kind of took notice to that right from the get-go. So the second event I showed up to, he had hired a photographer. And this photographer, for the life of his, he was so introverted. He just didn't know where to start. Oh, yeah. So Sarver goes, you know what? I have the perfect thing for you. See that guy over there? Just follow him and take photos of him. And I was like, okay. <laughs> You're talking about me, right? He's like, yeah. You don't mind? I'm like, eh, I don't mind. Free photos. Yeah. Free PR, right? Right, exactly. So by the end of the night, I think he had probably got photos of every single person that was at the party. Right. It's just because, because I'm, you were talking I'm walking them. around. Yeah. He's literally like my paparazzi walking around the room taking photos. And we became best of friends too. Like right. Me and the photographer. Oh. I'm like, oh yeah, you want me to pose again? So it was really fun to just kind of like get that going. And, and then because of it, I think Sarwar is like, well, now you're the face of it. Right. So you have no choice but to be part of it. <laughs> so that's kind of how it he started. He wanted a partner. That's, yeah. That's partner in crime. Yeah. We're also like, we have a really good energy. Him and I, we have such a fantastic energy going on. And there's, it's not just me and him, by the way. There's also Rana, they've got Anmar, you've got mm -hmm. all of those folks that are always helping in one way or another. Yes. And that's the beauty about Beyond is like, it's never just one person. Yeah. We're all doing this because it is so, Beyond Networking. Yeah. It's not just about, I come out, I do my spiel, we start talking. Yeah. No, it's really about what can I do to like build friendship. Yes. A yeah. small and little community and support one another. Yeah. And that's what I love about Beyond Networking. I also love that about Rendezvous and what Aaron McFarland mm -hmm. is doing. I think it's, it's brilliant. Exactly. And, and it's I, all about yeah. like, hey, what can I do for your business? Right. It's how can I help you? How can I help yeah. you? Because I know what goes around is going to come around. Yeah. Oh, and when you have that connection with people, it's so special, isn't mm -hmm. it? Sometimes you meet people and you're just like, wow, they are your people. And it yeah. goes back to that alignment we were talking Exactly. About. Exactly. Just making sure that, you know what, you're on the same wavelength in a way. Yes. And those people become your, you know, your front row and they're your supporters and your cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. And so if something came your way and you really, you know, love, let's say, Sarwar, uh, you're going to send that business to him oh, yeah. and vice versa. So I think we've done that like over the last couple of years of Probably sent them close to 20, 30 clients, maybe. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's like it's my, myself and, and Soleil Susie, who is a coach, and I met her in an event, and she and I just, you know, quickly hit it off. And she's just my kind of person. Yeah. And then she became my business coach, and she really has helped me oh, develop yeah. the business quickly over the last year. It's been just amazing to have that person uh, on your side and lifting you up when, you know, everyone has. That and that's day. what you need in like a, in a business community is that, you know, just. People that are going to be your advocate. Yes. At the end of the day, we're all entrepreneurs. We're all doing this yes. for our families. We're all doing this for a purpose, for a why. Uh -huh. And if we can somehow align our whys together, yep. what better community you know, than this? I find that maybe it's, you know, being more experienced now or older. But I also, when you meet people like that, you make sure that you keep them in your life. But when you meet people on the other spectrum that aren't lifting one another up, yeah. that aren't there for the good of the, the whole, um, I just, that energy, I don't want to be around that anymore. 100%. Yeah. And I, one of the things that I, someone had once told me is like, look, when you're sitting at a table and you find that your value is not there, you just have to change the table. Right. Sometimes it's not a fit. So, I didn't sometimes it's situations. not you. Right. A lot of the time, it's not you. It's just the table. Yep. You change yourself. You move from one table to another. Next good. thing you know. That's Sometimes it. that happens and, and you become more strategic about what is your table or your room. It's just, It goes back to the same thing with yeah. clients and people you're working with. Sometimes they can be great. You can be great. But it, for whatever reason, there's just not a fit there. Exactly. And so it's easier to, I think, walk away from that and find the ones that are fit than try and make it fit because that usually never never works. So I try and put my energy into the people who are a natural fit that you have a great connection with. And I think that pays off in the end. It does and it helps out everybody. At the end of the day, it's like, you know, when, when the tide comes, all ships rise. Yes. And That's people perceive that too, right? They can tell that you're 
enjoying each other's company or you're going out yeah. and doing something positive in the community. They feel it and they feel when it's authentic. It's funny you say it though, because I, we were at one of those networking events and then Star Wars saying something about, oh, my bromance and this and that. And then I showed up and then. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, hey, here's my bromance. And they're like, oh, wait, you're fatty. Like I didn't even. Yes, you didn't myself. even. Exactly. Because, and I, it happens again with uh, with Eric and a few other people that are like just the way that we are with one another. It's just everybody knows when they meet you. Yeah. And it's even if they don't meet you, they know who you are yeah. because of it. Carrie, it's been lovely. Really appreciate you being on the show. And uh, for folks that are watching, thank you so much for uh, for following us. And if you want to watch more episodes like this, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you can get more and more. And hit the bell icon so you can actually get alerted anytime that new episode comes out. And if you want to know about more about Carrie, don't forget to follow her on LinkedIn. She's fantastic. She's been doing this work for quite some time since she was five years old. So <laughs> yeah. thank you so much again. Thank you, Patty. I really appreciate it. It's been so fun. Perfect. Perfect.